In this screencast, I will illustrate how to make a tilt shift miniature photo using Inkscape 047 pre release 4. I'm using 047 pre 4 now because it's uh, the default install at the moment for Ubuntu Karmic. And since I just installed Karmic yesterday, that is the version I'll be using until 047 is finally released. Another reason that I wanted to use 047 Pre-4 for this episode was that they had fixed the HSB or the hue saturation and balance effect for raster images under Ubuntu. That was broken in 046 and I th think Ubuntu 904. If you would rather not muck around with the pre-release version of Inkscape, then not to worry. You can always use GIMP instead. I'll explain that in further detail as we get into the video. Before I get started, I want to explain what tilt shift photography is and uh, where I got the idea for the screencast. So I'm going to open up a uh, browser, and I've gone to the Wikipedia page under miniature faking. Here uh, they explain what this type of thing is, and uh, I want to open up a picture that they have here. Uh, this is just a standard picture before the effect was made, and I'll hit my back button, and this is what the effect looks like after it's been made. It's kind of neat and makes it look kind of like a model. That's what we're going for. Okay. Also, I want to give credit where credit is due. Um, I got the idea for the screencast from a couple of past episodes of uh, Meet the Gimp where Rolf explained how to do this very thing. Uh, I think it was episode 95. Uh, Rolf talked about that and also I think his episode 97 uh, is where he comes in with a uh, second part. So if you want to see how that effect is done in a uh, proper raster editor like GIMP, then uh, please check out Rolf's episodes there. Again, that's Meet the GIMP, uh, episode 95 and episode 97. So let's get started. All right, uh, the first thing that I'm going to do is uh, uh, bring in my raster image. And I have a picture of Indianapolis. Indiana and if I click on the image you notice that I have a 1504 by 1000 image so what I'm going to do is go to my document properties and we'll slide this back in here and I'm going to make that the same size 1504 wide by 1000 okay and we'll take our image and we'll open up our line and distribute button here and we'll center that up on our page. Okay. Now, uh, one thing I want to make a note of: uh, my key status monitor down here is uh, only partially working. It's not picking up my mouse movements. Uh, I'll have to fix that under Karmic, um, but it is getting my uh, my uh, mouse button, or I'm sorry, my keyboard buttons. So just be aware of that. That's something I'll fix eventually, but. Right now, I have yet really to configure Karmic uh, to my liking, so that's what's going on with that. All right, so let's close this button here. Um, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take this image, and we're going to go to our extensions, raster. We're going to go to the HSB adjust. Okay, and what we want to do, I'm going to take my default image here, and I want to mark up the saturation by 100%. Okay, so I've got the brightness and the hue set down to zero, and I'm going to hit apply. Okay, and if we zoom in on that, by overdoing that saturation, it, uh, it's going to kind of give it like a painted feel, like uh, somebody's painted a model or whatever. That's what we were going for there. Okay, now having the image highlighted, I'm going to go back to my uh, raster settings again, and this time I'm going to select sharpen. That gets cut off down here, but uh, just look for the uh, sharpen effect. And for this one, I'm going to give this image just a little bit uh, of sharpening. So I've got the radius and the sigma set to 0.2, and I'm going to hit apply. Okay, and that's just going to bring out just a little bit of, uh, of sharpening on our brick and stuff. Okay, we don't want to add a lot there. We don't want to overdo it. Okay, now this is the section here where you can do this in Inkscape now, but depending on your version and your operating system where those, um, excuse me, those raster effects were broken, you can do this part in GIMP if you wish. Okay, and especially with the new uh, uh, Inkscape, um, I think you can open that up externally here. Whoops, let me change my mic here. Let me bend it out just a little bit. 
Okay, so let's carry on here. I've got my uh, image uh, saturated and sharpened, and what I'm going to do is right-click on this and duplicate it, and right-click again and duplicate it a second time. And I'm going to take this image here, push it off to the side, and again, we do have an image there. Okay, so let me just undo that and put that back. All right, now I'm going to zoom in. And I'm going to draw a rectangle across here. And I'll make that white, and we'll make it true white. I'm using tango colors right now. Okay, we'll slide that all the way up. There we go. And it's not necessary, but I'm going to go ahead and just center that on my, my page here. There we go. And I'm going to give this just a little bit of a fillet around here. And we're going to give this about a 13% for a blur. Go ahead and stretch that down just a little bit more there. Okay. There we go. Now what I'm going to do is select my my white blurred image, hold my shift key down and select my image back here, and we're going to go to object mask set. Okay. Now you can't see that, but what we have here is we have a mask right on top of the image. Okay. So if I burn out just a little bit, we'll see that we've got our mask here. <clears throat> now what I'm going to do is I'm going to back up a little bit because I don't like what I've done here. I'm going to scoot this up just a little bit more. There we go. And I'm going to go ahead and mask that again. Okay. There we go. I want that bottom to fade out just a little bit more. All right. That gets that part. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to give this image here a blur. Okay. So we're going to blur that about 1.1%. Okay. Now when I put this back on here, go to our line and distribute. Whoops. That's the wrong one. Okay, if we look at this now, this is basically the effect that we're after. Okay, now you can see everything else is kind of blurred away, and the focus point here is our fake tilt effect that we wanted to make. Okay, and if you're satisfied with that, you're done at this point. However, there is something that I want to add to it. <clears throat> um, Back a few months ago when uh, uh, Richard and I were screwing around with these uh, fake tilt shift images, um, Richard suggested that I try to add a uh, vignetting to this image. And what that is, if I open up my browser, and I've gone to the vignetting part in Wikipedia, you see that this effect, basically what you do is you brighten up the focal point of what you want to see, and then you darken the edges around here. Uh, that's what we're going to try to do down here. Okay, so we do that by zooming out. And now we're going to play with this image over here. Okay, now remember, this image is 1504 by 1000 pixels. So I'm going to draw a... We're going to draw a rectangle, that same size. Make this purple so we can see it. Okay get in here. This is going to be 1504 wide by 1000 high. Okay, I'm going to make it all black and we'll make it pure black here, not tangle black. Whoops, let me get to my right button here. We'll get to the color button. There we go. And I'm going to slide that off to the side here. Now what I'm going to do is uh, make a an ellipse, and 
and we'll make it pure white. And I'm going to make my ellipse the same size as my picture, 1504 by 1000. And I'm going to put that right on top. So we're going to go to our Line and Distribute button. And we do Last Selected. OK, and we get that centered there. And what I need to do now is I need to give this a blur this uh, white ellipse. So I'm going to give it the same blur that I added to this image here, which was a 1.1%. Uh, oh, actually, I take that back. I'm going to make this one 12% first, okay, because we're going to mask this. So I'm going to window around uh, both images here, my uh, my ellipse and my picture in the background and I'm gonna go to object mask set okay that's gonna fade my image out and we'll put this below okay now what I'm gonna do is make this about 15 percent transparent so when I slide that back in there you see that it's gonna darken up my uh, my edges there okay that's kinda what I'm after Okay, um, now I'm ready to blur this image. So what I'm going to do is give this the same blur as I gave this image over here, which is 1.1%. Okay, so let's back up here. Let's get this thing off to the side. And I want to get this bit here right on top. So we're going to go to our Line and Distribute button. I'm going to select Page here. And we're going to put that right on top. Then I'm going to take this image and put that on top. Actually, I might have to go down one here. There we go. Then I'm going to take this image, make sure it's all the way to the top. And that's that, by the way, before I carry on here. This is the vignetting that we're trying to go for. Let me get rid of this box here. You can see that it's darkened here. And if that's not quite what you want, what we can do is uh, move this off here. OK, I'm going to select this black image. And if 15% is not quite dark enough, we can add another, maybe another 10 to that and really darken that up. And we'll line this on our page. There we go. And that kind of gives a, uh, a nice dark edge there and puts that focal point in the middle. Okay, we'll make sure this is to the top. And that's my wrong button. We'll go to the Align and Distribute. And here is our final image. Okay, so let's zoom in on this and take a look at it. Whoops, I don't want to draw a square. I actually want to zoom. And here's our final image. Okay, so this is what we were going for. We were going for a, a fake tilt shift, which I think we've, we've done correctly in Inkscape. Our uh, upper things are, are things that aren't quite as important, are blurred. Uh, the main part is uh, sharpened, saturated, and we've added a, a little bit of injetting around there. Okay, and hopefully we've pulled it off. Now, the image that I used, I got permission to use this image uh, from a very nice guy uh, in Indianapolis, Indiana. Um, I think he is it's something to do with construction or real estate, um, but it doesn't matter. You can uh, plug in some uh, city scapes or whatever they call them in Google Images, find some nice pictures uh, to practice with. Um, I think Richard, uh, when Richard was playing around with these, I think he got a great picture of a uh, soccer game uh, that he attended, and I thought it was great looking the way that he did it. Um, looked like the little people or the soccer players were models and stuff. So that's it. That's our fake tilt shift 
image making in Inkscape. So again, this type of uh, stuff is usually done in like a raster editor, uh, but uh, Inkscape can uh, can do the effect just fine. So these things are a lot of fun, and uh, I think there is a place online somewhere on Flickr or something. There's a whole tilt shift or miniature faking group uh, where you can uh, check out those pictures. So have fun with this one, and thank you for watching. I'm HeathenX.